One of my very favorite scriptures in the Bible is Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It reminds us that everything that our Lord Jesus was able to accomplish in his earthly ministry, he can still perform for us and even through us today. When we look at the four gospels and we read the beautiful words of truth, the, the unbelievable expressions of love, the great miracles that took place in the very short period of his earthly ministry. The Bible tells us that the world could not contain the volumes, the books that could have been written about his earthly ministry. When we look at that, there's so much that can help us even in our lives today. One of those places in scripture that has inspired me recently is in Mark chapter five, where there are two outstanding miracles recorded in the ministry of Jesus Christ. One is we read of one whose name was Jairus. He was a leader, a ruler in the synagogue. He had great religious position and even authority. He came to Jesus to tell him that his daughter was very ill and at the point of death. And he was imploring the Lord, please come and pray for my daughter. She is even right now at the point of death. And Jesus agrees to go with Jairus. But I don't think they had gone very far before the scripture tells us that his journey was interrupted by a very desperate woman, a woman that we all have heard about many times, a woman with an issue of blood. The Bible tells us that she had spent everything that she had to the physicians, trying to get better, hoping for a change. But the Bible specifically tells us she rather grew worse. When she heard of the ministry of Jesus, she said, I've got to get to him. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. There was a great crowd following Jesus everywhere he went and the crowd was thronging him and bumping him and brushing against him. But all of a sudden, Jesus stopped. He knew that someone had touched him. He perceived that virtue, life, had gone out of him, and he turned to find out who it was. It's almost like the disciples were a, a little bit making fun or laughing a little bit. They said, how is it that you would ask who touched you? Everyone is touching you in the crowd. But he explained there was something different about that touch. It was a touch of faith. It was a touch of desperation. And I want you to know that Jesus responds to faith and he meets us at the point of our desperation. That woman from that moment on was made completely whole. I'm trying to imagine in my mind how Jairus was feeling. I know that Jairus must have been concerned about this woman and her need and all of the others that were reaching out to Jesus. But I think we're safe to assume that his daughter was foremost on his heart and in his mind. I've got a feeling that in some way he was wishing that the Lord would hurry, that he would rush because he knew that his daughter was just a few breaths away from death. In fact, the Bible tells us that as soon as Jesus spoke to this woman in Mark 5, 34, and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. The Bible tells us in the next verse, while Jesus was yet speaking, a messenger from the house of Jairus came and said, I'm here to tell you, your daughter has died and there's no need to trouble the master any longer. I want you to know that must have been very difficult news for Jairus to hear. But I want you to listen at how this story plays out. Jesus, as soon as he heard the word that was spoken by the ruler of the synagogue, 
he looks at Jairus and he says, be not afraid, only believe. What powerful words. Be not afraid, only believe. That, that's so powerful because we understand that fear is a hindrance to belief, to faith. If we can allow the Lord to calm our fears, then our faith can rise above the circumstances and we can reach out like the little woman with the issue of blood or Jairus whose heart was greatly grieved by the news that he had just received. And Jesus didn't want fear to stand in the way of faith. So he spoke to his fear first and then he spoke of his faith. Don't be afraid, only believe. I wonder how many hundreds of times we have sung that song. Only believe all things are possible. And indeed, they are. And so Jesus and Jairus, they continue on their journey to his home. Jesus asked the crowd, you remain here. He takes with him his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. And when they get to the home, they find a confusion, a noise, weeping and wailing going on. You see, if you look at the words of the servant, your daughter is dead. If you look at that in the original, it could have said dead is your daughter, which is very strong language. And what that actually means is the funeral is already beginning. That means, as it was the custom in that time and still today among the Jewish people, to bury a body almost immediately after death, usually at least within 24 hours. So what happened was, as soon as the little girl had been examined, there is no heartbeat, there is no breath, the mourners were already hired. This was the custom to bring in mourners, to weep and to cry and to wail so that everyone in the neighborhood would know there had been a death. It means that the body of that precious little girl would have already been what we would probably call today embalmed. Meaning in that period, her body was anointed with spices and precious oils and was wrapped in strips of cloth I guess that would sort of be like what we would think a mummy would look like. So the funeral was already in progression when Jesus gets to the house. And he said, why are you carrying on and making such a big uh, ado? What is going on here? This little girl, this daughter is not dead. She's just asleep. <laughs> No wonder they laughed him to scorn. How could he say that? She had been thoroughly examined, her body oiled and spiced and now wrapped with grave clothes. They were just waiting on Jairus to come home so that they could take her out to the graveyard and bury her. And Jesus calls it sleeping. Why? Because he saw through the confusion. He saw through the noise. He wasn't listening to the other voices. This is a lesson for you and I. We have to shut out all the other voices that tell us it's too late. There's no hope. Death is sure to come. They'll never come back to the Lord. There's no healing available for you today. I don't know what the voices are in your life. But I know that the weeping and the mourning and the carrying on was certainly saying, it's finished, it's done, it's over. And Jesus sends them out. Got to get doubt out of the way. Got to get unbelief out of the room. And he goes over and perhaps he has to uh, unravel the grave clothes a little bit because the Bible said he reaches in and takes her hand and he raises her up and he says to her, uh, being interpreted, the Bible said, he said, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway, the Bible said she not only arose, but she got up and walked around. 
she was 12 years old again the bible tells us there and they were all astonished with a great astonishment i imagine they were a funeral already in procession and jesus comes in and makes the difference i want to tell you today that we have to take heart take courage take strength when we read something like this this isn't a fairy tale or just a story this is a record of the power that jesus has not had he's the same i don't know what your hopeless situation is and i i say that like this in quotations i don't believe it's hopeless but whatever that situation is it's left you feeling powerless Jairus, can you imagine a father, powerless? He felt like there's nothing I can do. Jesus was indeed his only hope. We have to forget about the voices of doubt. We have to forget about the fear that tries to paralyze us. And we have to hear the words of truth from scripture. Don't be afraid, only believe. We know then all things are possible. Maybe you have had a bad report from the doctor. Maybe your children are backslid and away from God. Maybe your spouse is not serving the Lord. Maybe your marriage is breaking apart. You feel like there is no way out and no hope. I want to tell you today that indeed he is Jesus Christ. Oh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he speaks to you from his word today. Don't be afraid. Only believe. It's never too late to cry out to God. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Cry out to him. He still hears and answers prayer. He's still able to turn your situation around. He loves you so much. God bless you. Only believe.